You're listening to the SBA Loan Experts Podcast, your source for information, tips, and education on the SBA loan program from SBA expert Chris Hearn, founder and CEO of Fountainhead, the nation's leading non-bank SBA lender. Here's your host, Chris Hearn. And what we're going to do is just, just start writing numbers down the left-hand side. Uh, I think we got about 30 questions in here. We're going to cover a lot of the intricacies and some of the esoteric stuff about SBA 504 loans in particular. Okay? And this is going to be very interactive. And we're going to do the honor system. So everybody's going to score themselves. So what I want you to do on the sheet of paper is on the left-hand side, by your number, you're going to write your answer when I ask the question. And then you're going to put a line down the middle, and on the right-hand side, you're going to put the correct answer. Okay? Is that good? Everybody can follow that? And we're all the honor system, so you're going to keep track of your score. Okay? That's how we're going to do this today. Make sense? All right. So, a little bit about Fountainhead. We are a non-bank direct lender. We specialize in SBA 504 loans. We also do low LTV conventional loans. We do it all around the country. I've been in this space almost 20 years. Uh, my old company was also a specialist, a non-bank lender in SBA 504 financing. I founded that back in 2002, sold it to a bank in 2010. We were on the Inc. 500 list five, three years in a row, won you know, SBA financial services champion three times, a whole bunch of different stuff. I've testified before Congress both in person and written testimony a couple times as an expert on the program. So I've been doing this for a long time. I've actually funded about a billion six in this product over the years, all around the country, 43 states, Puerto Rico, and District of Columbia. I've even done Maine. You're the Maine guy, right? I funded a 504 in Maine, Saco. Yep. There's a uh, indoor soccer stadium right there off the highway. Yep. Um, I'm trying to think. I think every other state that was mentioned, I think I funded something in. So, so that's a little bit about my background, okay? And um, we're going to talk a lot about. So I'm not a CDC. I often get confused with being a CDC because I'm such a big advocate for SBA 504 financing. And what my experience is, I think this is my fourth time I've spoken at the uh, ASBDC conferences. And what I find is you all have a lot of different government lending programs to juggle, right? And not everybody is quite as knowledgeable about certain programs as they should be, okay? So this is a little bit of a challenge to some of you who like to compete on things to demonstrate your knowledge to me and to everybody else in here. And for those of you who maybe aren't quite aware of uh, some of the, the intricacies of the loan program, you'll have a chance to learn from each other and myself as we go through this today. Okay? Sound like a plan? All right. Okay. So let's get started. As I said, we're going to play our version of Jeopardy. I don't have the Jeopardy board. I'm not going to have you phrase it as a question, so don't worry. Okay? We're just going to, I'm going to give the questions and you answer. Is that, it's easier, right? That way? Okay. Question one. Here's the first one. So I want you to write it down first and then give me a, if you're pretty confident you have the right answer, raise your hand and let's discuss it. What is the typical SBA 504 loan structure and when can it differ? Everybody wrote it down? No clue. No clue. All right, Dots. Well, you put a big zero. <laughs> it's your answer. We'll get to it. All right. Did you have the answer? Yeah. All right, tell me. What is it? It's, um... At least I believe. Okay. That's fine. Go ahead. All right. It's um, 50% bank, uh -huh. 40% CDC, and 10% owner. That is generally correct. So you're going to give yourself a point for that. Okay. Although I would say it's not always bank as a non-bank lender. It can be a non-bank lender right. as well. But it's, but it's not a, a CDC. It's right. A it's a first lien mortgage or deed of trust, depending on your state. Is in a, generally a 50% of the total project cost is in that first position. Okay. Then the second position is the piece. Temporarily, it's the interim second loan, okay? But also usually provided by the same lender that did the first, but not always. Sometimes somebody else can come in. There could be, you know, uh, legal lending limit issues and whatnot, and you need somebody else. We actually do some of these sometimes for other banks or, or other institutions. But eventually, that interim second gets taken out by the SBA monthly debenture offering, right? It's a bond proceed that's been happening now uninterrupted monthly for over 33 years, okay? And then the last piece is, as you said, 10% is the borrower's equity injection, the down payment, 
right? That's generally the structure. Now tell me when it's different. Yes? New business or uh, specially used. Okay, new business or specially used property, right? Okay. And what happens then? 5% uh, increase for each. Uh, yeah, okay. 5% increase of the down payment. Right, so 10, if it's, from 10 to 15, if it's new, if it's new right. and specially 20. So what would be the structure? Like we said before, you know, the if it's 50, 40, 10 normally, what would it then be? Uh, I guess it would basically 50, 30, 20. Right. Okay, good. Do you, does everybody get that? So if, if a situation is such that it's a startup business, you, the SBA requires an additional 5% down payment from the borrower. Okay? If it's a special purpose property, okay? so not multi-purpose property, which is what this young lady was talking about, so like a hotel or a freestanding restaurant, or um, self-storage, daycare, things like that, you also have an additional 5% down payment. So your worst case scenario on an SBA 504 loan is 20% down from the borrower, okay? Could be as little as 10% down. And when you do those structures, typically that impacts the second mortgage piece, the SBA guaranteed portion. It would go down from normally 40% to maybe 35 or, or 30%. Has everybody got that? Okay. Who got it right? Just a quick show of hands. Close. Close. Eh, give yourself a half a point. When does it not impact the debenture piece? When can it impact the first lien person well, piece? Well, see. I thought that had to be 50%. It generally does. <laughs> okay. Um, but? But there's, uh, it kind of depends on the borrower. Uh, it, well, it depends on the borrower. It depends on the lender, frankly. Yeah, okay. If the lender wants to increase the LTV, from 50% to 60, 65, most of them don't go more than 65%. The lender has that option. But they can. Okay. They can, and usually the lender is, you know, is, is the dog wagging the tail, right. okay? Right. But that usually will irritate the CDCs, because mm -hmm. then that shrinks their piece, and gotcha. they don't like that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but there are some lenders, and they've gotten in trouble a little bit, a little hand slap every once in a while from this, when the lenders, the first lien lenders, have tried to increase it, maximize their income okay. at the expense of the SBA. And the, the other piece is, you know, why is that second mortgage so important? Why is that second mortgage piece so valuable to a small business owner? Because it's fixed. Well, it's, yeah, below market, long-term fixed right. rate. Probably one of the cheapest rates they're going to find in the marketplace, especially with such little down payment, right? Okay, so we're, we're I'm, I'm, I don't, don't want to get ahead of myself, but all right, so those are the, that's the answer, okay? Let's move on. Next question. What is the maximum net income and net worth a company can have and still be eligible for an SBA 504 loan? Does anybody know this? Did you know that there was these parameters? Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's okay. So, Back here. Yes. Five million. Which which part of the answer are you answering? Well, five million dollar net income. Okay. Tangible net worth of. Are you, are you working for SBDC or you work for a lender? No, I'm Terry from Selvig. Okay, so you work for a lender, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is why Terry's been raising his hand in the back there for the first couple questions. That's okay, that's good. No, it's no problem. Um, all right, let me, let me help you, okay? Believe it or not, we're going to cover a few other things, but two of the fundamental parameters in order to qualify for an SBA 504 loan, not everybody just automatically qualifies, okay? Your maximum net income from the operating company the borrower's operating company, cannot exceed $5 million for the preceding two years. And that's a $5 million average, by the way. Okay? Everybody got that? You understand that? So if one year they made $10 million in net, net income, and the next year, so magically they were, they were negative, you average them, you're just under $5 million, right? Can't be more than $5 million average net income for the preceding two years. That's the first piece. And the net worth of the company, and here's, this is kind of an interesting one, and you, this young lady also got it right again, $15 million tangible business net worth. Okay? Now, the reality is most of the people that you're going to come in contact with probably are nowhere close to that. Even if you're dealing with a big manufacturer that has a lot of heavy equipment, chances are they've depreciated it down, so this is not going to be a big issue. Hey everyone, thanks for listening to today's episode. Be sure to subscribe to our podcast to be notified weekly of new episodes and head over to fountainheadcc.com for more about our SBA 7A and SBA 504 resources. 
Also, give us a follow. You can find us by searching Fountainhead on any of your favorite social media channels. Thanks again, and we'll see you next week. Today's episode is brought to you by Fountainhead, the nation's leading non-bank SBA lender. Fountainhead's team of SBA experts will guide you through every step of the process and get your loan close faster and more efficient than any bank. Apply today online at fountainheadcc.com. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time on the SBA Loan Experts Podcast.